Hello, hello. So this product is something that I've been eagerly anticipating for quite some time, but now I can finally get my grubby hands on one. Before we get started, I must say how impressed I am with this polystyrene box. I mean, as far as over-engineered polystyrene boxes go, this is right up there. Check that out. Have you ever seen a latch like this on a polystyrene box? Amazing. I mean, if there were red dot designs available for polystyrene boxes, this would get one. Anyway, let's set it up. Squarespace is the sponsor of this video, the place to go for setting up your own domain, website or online store. Right, let's start off with balancing it first. Base plate mounted to the camera. Bosh. Okay, there we are. Slides right in. You can adjust the movement of the base plate by this lever bit here. Yep, so you don't want the camera leaning forwards too much or backwards, you just want it to be level like that. Lock that in place, now fix the tilt axis. Next thing to do is flip your camera up like this and then let go and it flops down, so you don't want that. Right, to balance that, you have to unscrew this bit. You want it so that when you let go of it, it doesn't swing down like that. There we are, that's, that is exactly what we want. We don't want it to tilt down. We want it to be able to balance by itself, just like that. You don't want it flopping around like a dead chicken. All for vegans replace dead chicken with pak choy leaf. Lock that, now adjust the roll axis. At whatever angle we put it at, it won't move. That's, that's pretty much, that's, that's pretty much done. There we are, done. Lastly, adjust the pan, nothing to do with toilets. Remember, you've got to rebalance it when you put a different lens on it. That's pretty much sorted, there you go. All right, let's switch it on now. Now, of course, as it's DJI, you've got the app, which I'm going to use now to, oh, oat, what? Auto-tune, I've become French. Oh yes, need to plug in the cable also. Now it's compatible with a number of cameras. Google it. <laughs> but it's compatible with the GHI, fully compatible. So you've, you can use the focus here, the follow focus, to control the focus on the GH5. Okay, let's auto-tune it again. Am I tuning a radio or what? Okay, and there we are, it's done. Brilliant. Well, as I briefly mentioned just now, it does have some of the functions here on the grip. So you've got the focus, you can focus with the GH5. Focus is smooth and lag free, I like. Or you've got a record button here, and then you've got the trigger button, press two to center it. Free for selfie. Hi. But otherwise you've just got the memory button to memory recall. You've got three memory functions here and the control stick, which does well, the obvious. Now, I went out on the streets to shoot at the Ronin S and the first thing you notice when you pick this thing up is it is pretty damn hefty. It's got some weight to it, but yeah, at the same time, it's got a generous payload at 3.6 kilograms. What does that mean in terms of cameras? Well, I mounted this to it, not this, this. Trying to balance a C300 Mark II on it is a serious pain in the ass, but with a light lens on, the Ronin S handles the wave it well. Sorry for the serious look on my face, I'm concentrating not to give myself a hernia lugging around one-handed. Yes, if you don't have any arm muscles, you will soon have some operating with this, but if you're not used to it, well, it's got a grip big enough for two hands, like a samurai sword. Hence the name, I guess. But if you're not used to handling this kind of weight, shoot in short bursts. And look, it's got a tripod here, so, just rest it on your hip. It is quite a fat grip, but it's not a badminton racket. You need that grip because of the weight above it. There are some handheld gimbals that are too firm or slim that when you shoot for a long time, it starts to hurt your hands. Didn't experience any such problem here. Oh, look at that. The joystick control is pretty damn smooth and responsive and the motors are strong and almost silent. Let's face it, gimbals are somewhat 
functional items, i.e. not that exciting. You don't care how it works so long as it works properly and the Ronin-S doesn't disappoint. And one thing is, the circuit tree must be pretty damn good because it handles extreme movements really well. I mean, you don't have to be waving about like a maniac trying to swat a fly with it, but it's good knowing that it can cope if you are a maniac. Now to do this thing called Roll 360, you've got to change the control settings. Channel 1, NA, Channel 3, Roll, done. Double click. Whee! Now that's fun for as long as your arm doesn't break. But anyway, I was talking about circuitry. A good handheld gimbal needs good circuitry, so it handles changes of movements like this really easily. Oh, that's really good exercise. Oof. It copes with inverting it without a problem more so. But the reason why I've been looking forward to Ronin S is because it's more like a properly developed product. I mean, it's got the DJI touches that make it much easier to access for consumers, even down to the batteries. I shot with it for half a day, still plenty of power left. Besides, it charges quick, taking just 2 hours 15 minutes. But no, really, the key thing with DJI products is the software. Holy shit, 4-1 to Belgium. Wow. Create. Such a beautiful category name. Okay, so we've got capture, panorama, time-lapse, motion-lapse, track. Just press that. It's really damn easy. It's ridiculous. I'm not even going to say a kid could use this. I think a kitten could use this with its little paws. Okay, and start. Well, this is really what separates DJI gimbals from most other brands. <laughs> yes, amazing. And you don't even have to be holding it to control it. Marvelous. You can get someone else to do the heavy work. And because it's tethered to the camera itself, you can create little panoramas like this. Not little, it's a bloody big panorama. It's taking 42 shots. All right, I'm going to stop. It sounds like I'm trying to blow smoke up everyone's backside. Hashtag not an ad. Look, it's $699, which is a damn good price for a much more refined product. There will be a double grip option and gimbal mounting systems can mount it on a car, whatever moving vehicles you want. Accessories, stuff like that. The Ronin S is what I'd go for. It works well, yes. But for me, the big selling point, like other DJI products, is how it has been designed with the user experience in mind. And now we are that close to the end of the video, but before we properly end the video, just a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. It's a website for people who want to build beautiful websites. They've got loads of templates and they make it really easy to use with 24 seven customer servers. It's brilliant. You might want to check it out. We have a plethora of templates to choose from with 16 new designer templates, award-winning 24-7 customer service, a simple way of transferring domain names over, Squarespace is ideal for those who want to create a personal website or for e-commerce. You can start a free trial today and you can get 10% off your first purchase with the code KAI.